From Yves Trudeau to Johnny K-9, Canada has a long history of notorious bikers who wreaked havoc in their wake. One of the most infamous of them all is a man from Quebec named Maurice Boucher, arguably the most brutal hell's angel to ever exist, and there's several good reasons for that. Born on June 21, 1943, Maurice's humble beginnings did not hint at the leadership role he would eventually play in the Montreal Biker War. Growing up in poverty with seven siblings, Maurice struggles to make ends meet, and after leaving school in the ninth grade, he finds himself in construction, like his father. But it doesn't take long for Maurice to realize that he isn't cut out for the backbreaking work. Instead, he turns to drugs, starting with marijuana and gradually escalating to harder drugs. As his addiction grows, so does his involvement in crime, resorting to theft to finance his habit. In 1974, Maurice is arrested for the first time, and the trial that follows drags on for a year, culminating in a 40-month prison sentence. It is during his time behind bars that the biker scene in Quebec undergoes a major shift. Does Maurice use his time in jail to reflect on his past actions and plan a different path forward, or will he continue down the same path upon his release? Does he maybe even make evil connections in the criminal prison underworld that will further his plans upon his release? It was a time of ruthless expansion and bloody battles for the infamous Hells Angels. They had already conquered New York City, but their insatiable thirst for power knew no bounds. Their next target? Canada. And leading the charge was one of their most notorious leaders, the infamous Yves Trudeau, a man whose name alone was enough to send shivers down the spine of anyone who crossed his path. The Hells Angels wasted no time in making their presence known in Canada. They quickly rose to the top of the drug trade, their grip on the underworld firm and unyielding. Maurice was a member of the SS, a right-wing biker gang. But it was clear from the outset that Maurice was no ordinary biker. He was ruthless, merciless, and feared by both his fellow bikers and the police. In 1984, Maurice was arrested for sexual assault and thrown behind bars for 40 months. It was during his time in custody that he decided to switch sides and join the Hells Angels, the winning team with the pole position in the drug trade. Maurice was hungry for power, and he knew that the Hells Angels would give him what he wanted. But fate had other plans for the Hells Angels expansion. Another gang, the Rock Machine Nomads, had declared war on the Hells Angels, changing the balance of power in the drug trade. The Nomads were a force to be reckoned with, formed spontaneously by a biker who had once ridden with Maurice in the SS. The streets were no longer safe, and the Hells Angels had to tread carefully. But Maurice was not one to shy away from a fight. He knew that the Hells Angels needed a hero, and he was ready to step up and be that hero. And that's exactly what he did. He murdered a rival biker, earning the respect and admiration of his fellow gang members. Maurice had finally proven his worth, and he had become a respected member of the Hells Angels. But was this really the right choice? Should he really have killed that guy? And will the Hells Angels' ruthless expansion and thirst for power ultimately lead to their downfall in Canada? Or will they maintain their firm grip on the underworld? They were struck down by the double-edged sword of betrayal and power struggles. The gang's leader fled on a warrant, leaving behind a gaping void of leadership. And to add salt to the wound, Yves Trudeau, one of the most powerful and feared rockers in the country, turned state witness. This left the once mighty Hell's Angels in a vulnerable and desperate state. But amidst the chaos, one man emerged as a true warrior, ready to fight and claw his way to the top. That man was none other than Maurice, the ruthless and merciless biker who had already made a name for himself among the bikers and police during his SS days. In 1987, Maurice ascended to the throne of the Hells Angels, determined to strengthen his gang by any means necessary. He began by bringing small rocker clubs under the Hells Angels banner, but those who refused the offer soon found themselves facing the full force of Maurice's iron will. They were either forced to submit or crushed underfoot. And when a club called the Outlaws dared to oppose the Hells Angels, Maurice showed them no mercy. 
In 1989, he gave the order to attack the outlaws' clubhouse with explosives. The outlaws surrendered and were absorbed into the Hell's Angels, while those who refused to bow down were swiftly dealt with. But Maurice's thirst for power and dominance was not yet quenched. He formed a new club called The Rockers, a group solely devoted to carrying out the dirty work necessary to ensure Hell's Angels' supremacy. Those who proved their worth in The Rockers were given the honor of becoming full-fledged Hell's Angels members, while the rest were cast aside. The boss of the Nomads was finally behind bars, a moment that marked the beginning of the end for the notorious gang. The man's connections to the Italian Mafia had made him nearly invincible, but with his arrest, Maurice finally saw an opportunity to take down the rival gang. It was time to put an end to their reign of terror, and Maurice wasn't going to back down. However, the Nomads were not going to surrender so easily. They fought back with brutal force, and the streets ran red with the blood of their victims. The year 1994 saw a staggering 20 murders related to the ongoing war between the two gangs. But Maurice was determined to come out on top, and he promised his followers a hefty reward of $100,000 for every nomad they killed. Maurice ruled his gang with an iron fist, demanding merciless violence against anyone who dared to cross their path. They targeted not only enemy rockers, but also informants, journalists, and even the police. But the authorities were not going to stand idly by and watch this chaos unfold. They created a special unit known as Wolverine, whose sole mission was to hunt down the bikers and bring them to justice. Maurice, however, was not one to back down. In response to Wolverine's actions, he drew up a list of targets that included prison guards, lawyers, and even judges. The reign of terror had truly begun, and Maurice was the one calling the shots. Maurice's reign of terror was unparalleled, with over 100 deaths and 80 bombings carried out under his command. His rule was marked by a brutal war between the Hell's Angels and their rivals, the Nomads, with innocent civilians, police officers, and even journalists caught in the crossfire. Despite numerous arrests and trials, Maurice always seemed to evade justice, with his powerful and intimidating presence in courtrooms and on the streets. However, his luck eventually ran out, and he was sentenced to life in prison for his crimes. Even behind bars, Maurice maintained his control over the Hell's Angels for some time. But eventually, his power waned, and he was officially expelled from the gang in 2014. He was also the victim of a stabbing in prison, which highlighted the risks of his former life of violence and crime. Maurice's story is a cautionary tale of the dangers of unchecked power and the devastating consequences of a life of crime.